Hello and welcome to the third video in the first series of three short teaching sessions about 12 lead ECGs for the I've Got the Rhythm Facebook group. In the two previous episodes, we looked at the basics of how an ECG records and how good preparation gives us a quality 12 lead ECG to interpret. In this episode, the focus will be on a systematic approach to reading that ECG. Lesson 5 then is the systematic approach. When we look to interpret a 12 lead ECG, it is easy to be distracted by the obvious or barn door abnormalities, or even to be overwhelmed by what gets printed out, as we see in this example here. This is particularly the case in ST elevation myocardial infarction, or STEMI. After all, that is what we are primarily looking for, right? Whilst the recognition of an obvious STEMI may be correct and achieved very quickly, the flip side to this approach is that we could miss something quite relevant, or we could indeed be fooled into diagnosing a STEMI mimic. If we take a systematic approach to reading the 12 lead ECG, we are less likely to miss something, and we are more likely to make an accurate interpretation, and as a result, make an accurate diagnosis. Even if you can't make a diagnosis, you will at least be able to describe what is seen on the ECG and document this on your paperwork. How do we avoid the pitfalls of making a snap judgment then? Well, the first thing is to use your ears and listen to the patient. Getting a good history is the most important part of recording a 12 lead ECG. Next, as we covered in our previous video, Good preparation and lead placement is the second cornerstone to recording a 12 lead ECG. Now we have listened, prepared and recorded our patient's ECG, we can then use our systematic approach to reading it. Here I will give an example of a systematic approach, but this is not the approach you must use. I am sure that many cardiologists and ECG gurus have their own methods. The important thing though is that you have one and that the one that you use works for you. For me, five simple steps are how I approach the ECG printouts. Look at the rate, the rhythm, axis, the waves and complexes and how the numbers relate to them in the intervals and segments. Rate and rhythm then. So what is the heart rate? Is it normal? In the context of the patient, for example, a heart rate of 54 may be normal in an athlete. And look at the rhythm. Is the rhythm regular? Is it irregular? Or is it even irregularly irregular? Is it a sinus rhythm where the impulse originates in the SA node and P waves can be seen on the ECG? Or is it something else, such as an atrial fibrillation, where no P waves can be seen? Axis. Is it normal? So between minus 30 degrees to plus 90 degrees. Is it a left axis, less than minus 30 degrees? Or a right axis, more than plus 90 degrees? Don't get too worried about axis deviation. It's a nice to know and not a need to know. You can see some of the causes listed here for both left and right axis and I may post a separate video blog just on axis deviation and explain it in simple terms which you may find useful or even have an epiphany. Who knows? Let's wait and see. Waves and complexes. P waves. Are they present and of the correct morphology? And do they precede each QRS? The best leads to view P waves in are leads 2 and V1. In V1, P waves can often be biphasic. The QRS complexes, are they present and are they of the correct morphology? Is there a QRS after every P wave? And is there good R wave progression through the precordial leads? T waves, are they inverted, are they peaked or even hyperacute? Are they concordant, in other words, in the same direction, or discordant, opposite direction, to the QRS complex? 
Look for added waves too. Are there any delta waves? That's where you get upsloping of the initial R wave. Or are there any U waves present? And you'll usually find those just after the T wave, as you can see in the diagram here. Intervals and segments. Look at the measurements for each wave and their relevant interval. Then look for any ST elevation and or depression. Your PR interval should be between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds. That's three to five small squares on standard printed ECG paper. Your QRS interval should be between 0.08 and 0.12 seconds. That's two to three small squares. And then your ST segment, is it isoelectric? Is it raised or even depressed? Then you can have a look at the QTC. The C stands for corrected, and you need to see if this is long or short. QTC is prolonged if it is more than 440 milliseconds in men or more than 460 milliseconds in women. QTC is abnormally short if it is less than 350 milliseconds. Steve did cover some of this information on his numbers uh, video blog that you may have already seen. Some takeaway points then from this first series of short videos for the 12 lead I've got the rhythm Facebook group. Make sure you always take a good history from your patient. Ensure good preparation. Be systematic in your approach and try not to be drawn in by the obvious. Obviously, we don't want you to miss the STEMI. After all, that's why we're all here doing this. And then document what you can see. It doesn't matter what your ability is. Even if you can't diagnose what you see on the ECG, by documenting what you can see, someone else may be able to pick up on it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've found this introduction to ECGs of benefit. And don't forget, never stop learning. Hope to see you all again soon.